yes, welcome back, Bappergrade. Bappergrade Aid, you are listening to Into the Dark Night, a Batman podcast. This is episode 140. I am one of your Gotham Central gurus, Bill, and joining me today is one of our loyal batties, Dustin Two Face Curse. Kurtz. What's up, Dustin? Hey, how you doing? Yes. Uh,. So, for those of you who may not have listened to Into the Dark Knight before, uh, get this This is what we usually do. We're going to uh, thank the sponsors, uh, talk about maybe some Batman news, and then get into our Bat Signal arc. Uh, this week, it's Batman and Robin uh, 1 to 3 from uh, Volume 1. Uh, and, of course, we do our uh, thank everyone and... Uh, you know, the usual. Everyone knows. Everyone's listened to End of the Dark Night oh, before. Oh, yeah, obviously. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> All right, so, yes, first we uh, thank our sponsors, our uh, the Patreon subscribers, or as we call them, our gracious Patmen. And, of course, Hello Headphones, empowering gamers to play at their best. All right, so, the pennies. Let's get, let's get into our pennies worth of news. Um... So, Dustin, have you been seeing any news on the uh, Batman, the Batman movie? Um, yeah, they, they revealed the suit in the, the Batmobile. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty excited. You know, I'm a, you know, I'm always a, you know cautiously optimistic about this kind of stuff, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of nervous with like uh, DC's track record with the last couple mm-hmm. movies, but it's just. I think they're going the right path. I know it's probably not realistic, but I don't know. I just don't. I don't know. I'm not, I, I haven't been feeling like the armored Batman and like the big tank mm-hmm. Batmobiles. I like that they like, you know, we actually got like a okay. car for the yeah. Batmobile. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Me too. And I don't know about the suit, but hopefully it's not. Uh, I mean, I guess it'll look fine. Uh, yeah. Affleck's probably looked yeah. the most comic accurate, but again, mm-hmm. we're probably you know probably not going to get that, and that at least this Batman might get to turn his head. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think uh, Affleck had the Keaton problem; he like couldn't like turn his head. Yeah. So yeah, so what do you think? Uh, what uh, what do you want? What are you looking forward to from the Batman? Uh, I mean, I don't really know much. They, they don't reveal much more about it besides like the suit, the uh, car, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, well, they've been ca- they've been casting like they cast their penguin. Uh, okay, I'm trying to remember. They've cast a bunch of people. I don't know if they've like we were at least getting a Catwoman and a penguin. Uh, That's good. All right. I don't know if we're getting more villains. So I don't know if because people were speculating they might be doing Long Halloween or they might be doing Arkham mm. Asylum. I don't know. Do you, would you want them to do like a bunch of villains? Because sometimes I think that's DC's other problems. They try to pack too much yeah. stuff in the movies. Maybe like two or three maybe at most but i wouldn't i wouldn't want them to pack like a lot in there yeah um, yeah like maybe one main villain and then a couple smaller ones or something yeah yeah like i said well maybe t- t- two would be the limit but again at this point i don't know if they're just worried they're not going to get a sequel so they're packing everything they can yeah. into them. <laughs> <laughs> that's true uh oh and did you see the harley quinn movie well the birds of prey harley quinn yeah i did i saw it the Sunday after it came out, did you um, like? I re- did you? I like loved it? it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it was all right. I just, I kind of wish that they had made it two separate movies. Like maybe like a Harley Quinn would have been with like Catwoman and Poison Ivy, and maybe the Birds mm-hmm. of Prey could have gotten their own movie. Because I, I think they really underserved Black Canary and Huntress. I, th- I wanted to see way more yeah, of those characters. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I was. It was mostly just like a Harley Quinn movie. It wasn't like Birds of Prey, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those characters were kind of like, just like background almost. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I really wanted way more from those characters. Anything else? Oh, have you been reading the the most recent Batman books? I'm way behind. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm like, uh, I'm still reading. Um, when um, what's his name? Oh, Tom, reading, Tom reading. Kings or? Yeah, Tom King. Yeah, I'll still I'm still reading that stuff. <laughs> I mean, that was pretty. That was a pretty decent run. I I really like yeah. the new stuff by uh, who's that? James Tynan the fourth. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. Ex- I really like him, so I'm excited to read um that stuff. Yeah, he's really doing some good stuff with Batman and Catwoman, and then then there's this whole the whole speculator thing with you know the one issue of Batman was like selling online for like forty bucks because of Joker, uh-huh. Joker's new sidekick. <laughs> 
All right. No, I mean. So it's the nineties all over again. What's that? It's the nineties all over again. People. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> all these speculators. Yeah, all right. So should we jump into the arc after we take a break? Yeah, sure. All right, everyone. Here we're gonna take a short break. Quick promo break, and we will be right back. Hey there! Do you like comic books? Do you like superhero TV and movies? Well, come on over and check out the Capes and Lunatics podcast. We have such shows as Capes and Lunatics and Super Connectivity, where we cover everything new and current and popular in the world of superheroes. And we also have episode-by-episode reviews of the Marvel Netflix shows and a monthly discussion of everything current on the DC Comics character Nightwing and a few other surprises all the time. So come join us for the Capes and Lunatics podcast. I am Connor from the House of L. And I am Ray from the House of Zod. We are two of the many, many survivors of Krypton's destruction, and we have made our home in Australia, and dare I say have become Australians, for better or worse. But we have also decided to read Superman comics, read Superman books, watch Superman shows, cartoons, movies, basically everything Superman, and from an Australian perspective as well. Whether you're a seasoned fan, like me, or whether you are coming in fresh, wide-eyed and wanting to learn more like me, then this podcast is for you. Join us for our bi-weekly adventures available on all good podcast catches. So just search for Last Sons of Krypton, a Superman podcast. We'll be coming to you from Australia or some cosmic dimension, wherever we are that week. Up, 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 up and, and away! away. Alright, hello, and we are back to Into the Dark Knight, a Batman podcast. Uh, we're going to get into our Over the Bat Signal arc review. Like we said this week, we're covering Batman and Robin, Volume 1, uh, Issues 1, and one, 2, and 3 from, well, the cover dates are August, September, and October 2009. Uh, you can find these on DC Universe, the DC Comics app, Comicsology course the floppies and uh there are trades on amazon so mm-hmm. yeah you can this is a pretty easy find like i said it's a, only like yeah, 11 years no, only, it's not even 11 years old yet it's pretty easy mm-hmm. to find uh writers uh writers writer grant morrison of course uh penciler and inker frank quitely uh colorist alex sinclair letterer pat brousseau and editors mike martz and janelle aslin uh, all right, here, I'll do the quick summary, then we can uh, talk these out. Yes, a uh, round-robin summary. The new Batman and Robin take down a villain named Mr. Toad and deliver him to the police. Batman and Robin then set out to the police department after meeting up with Alfred to answer the bat signal. Professor Pig, a psychotic mutilation enthusiast in the guise of a pig, then tortures one of Toad's men fixing him with a Dolatron mask. Pig then expresses interest to doing the same to the man's daughter. Dick and Damien then fight the Circus of Strange. Dick fails Damien, who leaves to beat Pig alone afterward. Damien then sees the man's daughter, promising to save her and her father before being knocked out. Eventually, Dick and Damien stop the gang while the girl was saved by the Red Hood in a new uniform. All right, so yeah, I I I kind of like this art. Well, I like most of the books around this time because I mean, Batman is a big favorite of mine. But I think mm-hmm. probably my favorite DC Comics character is uh, Dick Grayson, Nightwing. So, oh yeah. So yes, he, here this was like the beginning of. At this time, everyone thought Bat Bruce Wayne was dead. So yes, Dick Gra- as you probably got from the summary, Dick Grayson was the new Batman, and mm-hmm. Damian Wayne was the Robin. So. I feel like I've been talking forever, Dustin. What did you? What do? What do you? What do you think of this? Um, I really liked it. Um, uh, you know, I'm a, I, 
I'm not I'm a huge fan of Grant Morrison. I mean, I like his stuff, but I'm not like obsessed with him. Other some people get. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I really like this. Um, I like the art. Frank Quit- uh, Quintley is um, is it Quitely, Sorry, Frank Quitely is pretty good. Um, he his style is definitely um, unique. I could tell it was him before yeah. I even like looked at the name. Um, I you know, I love Mister uh, Professor Pig. Um, <sighs> yeah, I, I feel like he gets underused a lot as a Batman villain. Um, he's just like his creepy level is beyond anything else Batman has. Um, and uh, the whole circus stuff was cool. Kind of played in with Dick Grayson a little bit, you know, because okay. he has a circus past. Um, the action was good. Yeah, you know, I really liked it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, Grant Morrison. He's not the be all end all for me, but I like a lot of his stuff, like his uh, JLA mm-hmm. from the nineties. I like that stuff. Um, and then these two, uh, Morrison and Quitely, worked on X Men. Was it the early two thousands? They did mm-hmm. some uh, okay. interesting stuff over there. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, Grant Morrison in sm- like in small doses because usually I'm like, oh yeah, his writing's great, but then sometimes he really veers off in the stuff, and I'm just like, what yeah, is he, he is. smoking? <laughs> Because I believe, I think he even said, like, he, uh, <laughs> that's all right. Uh, but yeah, everyone, I uh, just, I don't know. I think Morrison's even admitted that, like, he, I don't know, like, he partakes of certain chemicals before writing and stuff. So sometimes it's just like, sorry, that's okay. Yeah, I was just <laughs> saying, yeah, sometimes, like, Grant Morrison, some of his ideas are way out there. I think he even admits to, like, Mm-hmm. indulging in certain chemical uh influences before writing sometimes <laughs> that, you know because yeah. you know like it, like he's writing green lantern right now and it, you know sometimes like i'm like i like what he's doing right now but sometimes it's just like oh yes there's a universe where instead of light there's music or it's like what mm-hmm. or you know like travel like travels at 22 miles an hour and it's like yeah but yeah i like i like a lot of his stuff like i said i really like his jla stuff uh he did some uh, good stuff on new X Men with uh, where Clayton was the artist. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, I love Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson's probably my favorite DC Comics character. Uh, mm. Yeah, he's good. So, all right, here's my big thing because people uh, always have seem to have a uh, definitive opinion on this. Uh, what do you think of Damian Wayne as Robin? I've always liked Damian. I know he gets a lot of hate. Um, <laughs> I don't really understand it. I've always liked him. He's just he's a different type of Robin, mm-hmm. you know. I always uh, thought he he contrasted well with Bruce. Oh, really? Yeah, I th- I always think like he he works better and even con- contrasts better with Dick because Damien is so much like his father and Dick mm-hmm. is like the lighthearted one. Because that was the whole like thing with this series. It's like oh, we got a lighter Batman, but a darker Ro- Robin and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, it just seems like Damien and Bruce are always clashing heads. I like I said, mm-hmm. it almost like. I know it's like an older brother figure, but Dick almost seems like a, oh, yeah. like a better father for Damien than Bruce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he does. Um, he's definitely got that older brother feel with him. And I don't, I mean, I, I, maybe this was a, just a Morrison thing, but although it showed up in the other books at the time, but I'm just like, why did they ever get rid of a flying Batmobile? <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty awesome. I know. It would seem handy, if nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> Cause just that, just that first scene in the first issue where they're like chasing Toad's men and the, stuff in the, in the just, tunnel. Yeah. Yes, and they just like pick up the whole car with the Batmobile. Yeah. And again, at first I'm just like, oh, it just seems weird to have like half, like half animal, half man, that guys running around. But again, this is Gotham, so I guess you know, yeah. you got your Killer Crocs and stuff. So I didn't really, yeah, didn't really question it. <laughs> yeah. And then what did you think about uh, this whole period with like Dick Grayson as Batman? Um, I mean, I like Bruce, obviously, but I didn't, I don't mind it when Dick becomes Batman. It's obviously, it's not his, um, he's not very comfortable in it, no. which is a different, different dynamic. So you get that whole, instead of like the Bruce, you know, like shaking his fist at the darkness, it's more like Dick Grayson having an identity crisis, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, I don't hate it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Like I said, like they're Batman and Nightwing are probably my number one and number two favorite DC characters. Mm. So they, yeah, when they became one, I was like, okay, all right, I'm here for this. Uh, like I said, it's very interesting that Dick and Damien, uh, Mm-mm. interactions and just, and then in this, in the first issue, they, they move out of the manor and move under, uh, Wayne tower, very like seventies Batman ish. Oh yeah. I like that scene with, um, 
when Alfred's going down, I forget what issue it was. That one page. Oh yeah. Wherever it is. Well, there's what there is in the first issue here. Him taking. Oh, it's in the first issue. All right. Well, there's one with yeah, him, yeah, yeah, taking food down to them. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, that was a pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, because that's a, that is like what? a theme that seems to always pop up. Because I know Dick's always like saying, you know, I always told Bruce we should be closer to the action and like in the city and stuff. Hmm. Yeah. Which, I mean, certain ways it makes sense, but other ones, it's just like, you're the more isolated, the less chance you are of getting, you know, your headquarters Caught. broken into. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So you think, like, at, in this whole story, like, every, 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 like, Morrison got all the characterizations down good, like, no one's, like, written out of character or anything? Um, yeah, I think so. I don't really, nothing seems that jarring to me. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the you know, the, the ones that I'm familiar with seem to Britain pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, like, Pig and, uh, uh, Damien and Dick and Alfred. I also like um, how, like how Morrison writes uh, Commissioner Gordon in this because it's like I think mm-hmm. Gordon kind of figures out that it's Nightwing under the mask. Yeah. Because like when Dick became uh, Batman and Prodigal in the nineties, like Gordon seemed to have no idea. And he just was, was just like all pissed that it was like he's like, oh no, another fake Batman. You know why are you know why isn't Batman telling me what's going on here? I like that he like kind of figures it out. Mm-hmm. And even says he's like I, th- I think is it in this arc or the next one he says something like oh yeah I'm, yeah the guys on the force like you know <laughs> kind of hinting around oh yeah the guys on the force kind of like you more than the old Batman because you're actually like, <laughs> nice to them and stuff yeah yeah I thought that was funny he's just like yeah you treat them fun. like human beings yeah they like <laughs> <laughs> but I just but this art is just I love this art it's great Quaitly I think does a good job. Uh, even just like the coloring and stuff, like even when they're in the Batmobile and stuff, and mm-hmm. oh yeah, Alex and Claire colors. Yeah, the colors are great because yeah. Oh yeah, it's very colorful. They give it like that red tone when they're in the Batmobile and mm-hmm. everything, and yeah, just the skies and stuff. And you, oh, and then that uh, splash page when they <laughs> they glide out of the Batmobile. Yeah, I was just looking at that. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Even that bat bat signal in the sky, it's not like a perfect bat signal. Yeah. Of course, you know, it's going to mm-hmm. be going across clouds and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you said, Professor Pig, I don't think Professor Pig gets a... I don't know if he, it's just because he's such a newer character that he doesn't get as much uh, credit and stuff. Although they did have him on the Gotham TV show for a little bit, but... Which I thought oh, was kind it? Of I weird, seen but, that. Yeah, I found it kind of weird since it's like a prequel, but I mean... Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if professor pig doesn't get like i mean he's creepy but i don't know if they're just like oh he's not tough enough or whatever it's like yeah he does get beat pretty easy once it's uh time <laughs> yeah, <he laughs> kind of throw down he needs some kind of gimmick like a weapon or something mm-hmm. bring him up to like joker status or something yeah yeah that's yeah because pr- right before this that you know uh, before bruce wayne disappeared got uh, morrison did the batman r.i.p arc and it's just like yeah, Morrison goes in for like that weird, creepy stuff, you know, just like the Doctor Hurts and the Professor Pigs and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah, issue, I'm looking at issue two because uh, yeah, Gordon looking at, looking at Batman right away. You know, it's like, hey, you've been gone for a while, and he's like, yeah, oh, you can almost see him squinting. It's like, yeah, you look a little smaller and eh. <laughs> <laughs> not as tall. Oh my lord! And then like the uh, Professor Pigs, pe- like the circus people. This is oh yeah. That's um, that's weird. Like the one guy's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not a skull, but it almost looks like it's like a flaming ghost rider head. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And then is that supposed to be a bearded woman? <laughs> oh, well, I didn't see that. Well, if it well, the big uh, I'm trying to find that. Yeah, I'm looking issue two when they like uh, storm the uh, police station. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I love this slide when, uh, yeah, the woman's like, don't come any closer. And yeah, Damien's like, I don't need to. I can cripple you from here. Yeah. That, that is such a Damien line. Yeah. He's a, he's a little edge lord. <laughs> I know. I know. He's always like, it's always like, oh, oh please, can I kill them? <laughs> uh, oh, and I love Dick talking circus talk to these criminals. He's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know circus yeah. slang. And then, oh, Toad and his crew have been traveling in some, trading in some next level mind control drugs with Russian people traffickers. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's shit gets real. <laughs> yes. 
Oh yeah, I love da- Damien's interrogation. He puts a bucket over her head and just he's just like smacking yeah. the bucket. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny. And then Mr. Toad gets killed. <laughs> That's so weird because isn't there like a Mr. Toad like children's book or something? It's just like yeah, there is. There's this evil. <laughs> There's this Gotham criminal. Although I guess <laughs> I guess you know like Mad Hatter. Yeah. Yeah. Gordon and then Bruce. Again, it's like they kind of swap the uh, theme with like a lighter Batman and a darker Robin, but it's almost mm-hmm. even similar to like when Jason Todd was Robin. Oh yeah, yeah. Because like bit. you know, basically, you know, Batman telling Robin, you know, you know, tone down the violence, no killing. <laughs> uh, mm, <laughs> what about your detective skills? What about learning how to de- obey in a direct order? And then Damien's like, oh, you're poor impersonation of my father. It's like, you knew your father for like five minutes before he disappeared. It's like, yeah. Well, you know, he's a little mm-hmm. little bratty teenager. Or he's not a teenager, he's 10, isn't he? Yeah, Either I think, way. I think he's 10 at this point. Yeah, they've aged him <laughs> yeah, recently to like 13, I think. But yeah, he's like 10 here. I don't know if that was the whole gimmick is like this mouthy 10-year-old because... Yeah, you know, I, I remember like reading all the books at this time, and like he would get he'd get up on everyone's face, like when uh, mm. you know, like even like Stephanie Brown, who's Batgirl at the time, he's like, Pff. he's like, do you deserve that bat on your less than impressive chest? <laughs> and just like you know, for another, yeah, he's... should have been slats, <laughs> you know, you <laughs> yeah, to he's time out. And then just the whole pep talk with Dick and uh, Alfred at the at the end of the second issue here is great. Oh yeah, when he's like the show must go on. Yes. Yeah, because you know, th- you know, like you were saying, I think, you know, Dick's like, you know, I can't be Batman, and uh, mm-hmm. like you said, yeah, Alfred's like, yeah, your parents were in show business, you know, trying not to think of Batman as a memorial, but you know, yeah, I thought that was a because this is, doesn't Alfred have like an acting background or something? I th- or in some in some version, doesn't he? In some, he does. Yeah, I don't. Know, I'm trying to remember. He might still at this point because sometimes he's an actor, sometimes he's like you know former spy or whatever. Mm-hmm. I just love how he's like he hates the cape, but, you know, throws off his balance. Mm-hmm. He's like, that's the first thing I got rid of once I, you know, became nightly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he's like, yeah, think of Batman as a performance. You know, think of it as a great role like Hamlet or Willie Loman or even James Bond. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's all it's all pretends. It's, yeah, I mean, well, I guess for except for Bruce Wayne, he's always like I'm Batman. <laughs> so, Bruce is the mask. Oh yeah, and then yeah, Pig and his people are hiding out at this circus. Like, it probably isn't, but um, like I remember reading this, I was like, wait a minute, is this gonna be like the circus from uh, Killing Joke? You know, that one the Joker bought in the Killing Joke. Yeah, I get that. <clears throat> I did have that. I was like, oh, it's getting that kind of vibe in it. <laughs> 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 but yeah I don't think or if they did they never really like called it out or anything Mm-mm. because of course Damien falls into a trap mm-hmm. no one saw that going <laughs> <laughs> issue 3 with uh, Batman on his big like bat quad <laughs> yeah <gasps> hey, let me dragging that guy down the street oh. and then uh, you know Gordon mentions he's like you know uh, I allowed you access to this guy and you dragged him to the street. <laughs> He's like, who the hell are you? I'm Batman. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were different. <laughs> yep. Oh, I think he comes around. He comes around by the end of this one. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. And then, oh, yeah. Pig has uh, Damien uh, tied up and has the girl. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know it's getting real when he pulls out like a uh, power strip. Like he uh, power, power tool. tools. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Cause he makes he, his, he, he, he has this sort of like sing not he's not singing but he has this like weird, weird little like speech thing he does like Joker does in the Killing Joke even yeah I know it's it's like I said it's pure Morrison it's like yeah yeah because he puts on when he say disco music he's like <laughs> starts going on about imagine your girl at a dance and meet a guy and his feet are pig trotters and <laughs> starts like taking his shirt off it's just. <laughs> Weird guy. Who can expect me to work on antipsychotics? <laughs> I just love. <laughs> he just like gets up in Damien's face, and at the end of the whole thing, he's like, "You just Damien, you just redefined wrong." 
<laughs> oh, Damien. Yeah. But then it breaks free because, like, yeah, like, Pig puts, like, these uh, masks on people and, mm-hmm. like, you, you really can't get them off and because uh, he uses them to control people. Yeah, he's, they're, they're, he calls them Dollatrons, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Then Batman finds more pigs people in the city because the... They sneeze on them. Well, yeah, because he thought they were carrying bombs, but they're carrying germs. It's like some yeah. uh, highly contagious disease. This is it's too real. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, that would never like, happen. Oh, no. oh but uh, Damien frees one of the girls who's not... A, she has one of the masks on, but she's not under pig's control. Yeah, she didn't do the whole process. Yeah. And then I see a big, uh, there's, it seems like the big theme here is fire, because then, like, it seems like Professor Bird's yeah. on fire. Lots of fire. Because then they're fighting uh, on a roller coaster while pigs on fire. <laughs> uh, I'll beat your face right off your skull for that. Uh, He's got that fire stick on his hands. <laughs> yes. Of course, Batman shows up, and they... Mm-hmm. It just looks like they're... <laughs> well, everyone's in dresses and has those masks on. It almost looks like they're beating up a bunch of women. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I like, how, I like when they punch him and they crack his mask in half. Yes. They both hit him. And they call Gordon and tell him, you know, that it's spreading, like, the flu. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, it's... They're spreading addiction. It's like... <laughs> Yeah, he finds the antidote. I know he's like, I don't know how easy it's gonna be, and huh, the one he wrote antidote on, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Damien's friend gets away. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Lord Laszlo Valentine, low rent extreme circus boss who becomes pig financing financing his experiments by selling next generation narcotics to small time Russian gangsters. Some sort of drug trade tale. I know. I love Gordon's like, that's all it is? <laughs> mm. uh, Batman's like, yeah, pay. and then, you know, it took Pig a while, but he finally figured out that he, you know, the potential of the scheme, you know, he could uh, infect the whole city, hold it for ransom, revolutionize mm-hmm. the drug trade. Oh, uh, yeah, see, Gordon's whole thing, my men asked, asked me to thank you for saving their lives back at the HQ, whatever happened these last few months, and I don't want to know I don't want to know what happened, you can count on my support so I think he figured out it's uh, Nightwing but yeah, I, I kind of like that, you know, that's that theme that every so often they bring up where it's like you know, they kind of hit around that maybe Gordon knows who's under the mask, but he, you know plausible deniability, it's like hey you know, if yeah. a government agency asked me, I don't know who Batman is <laughs> Yeah, definitely. But yeah, so Dick gives uh, Gordon the antidote. Yeah, but these masks are like surgically like. Yeah, he sews them on their face. Yeah, because I even at the hospital, they're like these. Their faces are coming off with the masks. Mm-hmm. And he's uh being creepy. Yes. <laughs> uh oh, and then they have a scene towards the end of Batman and Robin breaking in on another criminal. I think it. They kind of had a flash forward at the end of Batman R.I.P. So they, yeah, this is just like okay, this is where this, that took place. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's pretty cool. It's like uh, yeah, so Dick's living in like the penthouse of the uh, Wayne Tower now. Yeah, well, the manor is Bruce's home. I'm f- Bruce's home. I'm sure he's uh, that's his mentality at least. Well, yeah, I think he's you know it's like everything here looks like a seems like a museum or you know everything reminds me of Bruce. <sighs> and then at the end. Damien's little friend. Uh, yeah. Bang bang. Yes. I like the, I like the bangs in blood. That was cool. <laughs> yes, That's pretty cool. Because she gets uh, well, she picks up a new friend. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. the Red Hood, Jason Todd. Which is it's kind of interesting because like for some reason like in this book I don't know if it was a Morrison thing or a. Uh, Quietly thing, but he's wearing a completely different outfit than he wears in like yeah. any other appearance. This is like the old style Red Hood, like with that big. Yeah, he got the big, yeah, the big cylindrical uh, thing. Yeah, he's, he's like wearing an outfit with like a cape and stuff, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, yeah, at this time, every everyone else has him in like a leather jacket. Mm-hmm. But I guess he's kind of crazy at this point, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, because the next arc was uh, Revenge of the Red Hood, but. Yeah. 
yeah so uh yeah overall what did you what did you think of this one this arc i like it it was um it's entertaining it did i didn't i didn't feel like i was being forced to read it at any point you know it was yes. it was a good arc yeah it was short it wasn't too long yeah nice and smooth yeah they didn't drag it out for like you know six six or seven issues like a bendis or something yeah because uh, I was gonna say we we have we have a couple different ratings we could do. We can either do like a half, a quarter bat, a half bat, a three quarter bat, or a full bat, or uh, just a complete Batman for absolute excellent issues. Or, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. I have a scale of one to ten, uh, ten being a Joker and a one being a Maxi Zeus. So. Okay. Um. I guess. <laughs> what's I guess we'll do um. The quarter bats. Okay. Or the, yeah, that one. So, what do you think? I, cool. I, I think it was like a three quarter bat. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think I gotta agree with you. Yeah. Um. Again, there was some setup in this, but again, again, that's fine. And then there were like, what, at least three Batman books going at this time. Well, three or four mm-hmm. at least. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I agree. It, it was. It's good. Uh, really gets you in you know sets up the new batman and robin and mm-hmm. <clears throat> i haven't read too much of this era mm-hmm. but um I, I, I enjoyed it yeah yeah not too much not to, i mean like i said morrison can be way over the top sometimes so this wasn't that yeah. bad it wasn't too over the top yeah uh so yeah we said we enjoyed the art uh the characters seemed like they were you know all the characterizations were down uh and then references to other runs. Um, I mean, well, of course, Red Hood. That brings up a whole bunch of stuff. Oh yeah, uh, I love Red Hood. Yeah. So I was like excited to see him at the end there. And a lot, and a lot of the Morrison stuff showed up in the previous arc. Uh, the Batman R.I.P. stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, because it was in one of these issues. I think Dick makes a comment about uh, how Pig, like Pig, and the, some of the others, like had had Dick prisoner in Arkham, and were trying to drive him and say, "Nah, that was from Batman R.I.P." So. Okay. Yeah, it was very weird around this time because it's like they did the Batman arc and then Bat- Bruce just seemed to like suddenly disappear because I think, what was it, like Final Crisis was late or something. Yeah, just... Mm. Hey, I heard Final Crisis, that was a whole thing with that. Oh, yeah, because Batman... <laughs> See, here's why everyone thought Batman was dead, people. Uh, he tries to take down Darkseid. Darkseid transports him back to like the dawn of time with his Omega Beams, but like mm-hmm. meanwhile, Darkseid had been working on Batman clones. So like, I think even like Superman finds like a dead Batman clone. So like, no, okay. you, you, so when he looks at it uh, on like a you know like a no, molecular Batman. level, it's like, oh yeah, this is Bruce Wayne. Yeah. So yes, it's not like people just assumed he was dead. People, there was a body. Mm-hmm. Remember when they said, you know, in comics, you know, someone's not dead unless you see a body. That's not even true anymore. Yeah. You could still see a yeah, body. People come back. Yeah. No one stays dead. Like we said, like, you know, unless they're Uncle Ben. Yeah. Well, even he, didn't they bring him back at one point? They have brought him back at some points, yeah. <laughs> even the, the damn uh, rule doesn't work anymore. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Clones, time travel. Yeah, you can bring everyone back. All right. So... I feel like we got through that pretty quick. Is there anything else about these issues you wanted to mention? I don't think so. I think we covered pretty much everything. All right. Uh, I really didn't have any feedback for this, but I really didn't put it up because it's just kind of like a surprise thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, all right, everyone. Uh, remember, we are part of a uh, big uh, members of the collective, a big, uh, well, "Quote unquote collective of uh, like-minded podcasters. Uh, most of us uh, talking about comics. Uh, some more specific than others. Like, uh, hey, did anyone ever hear of that guy Ray? Uh, he does a show uh, with one of his Connors, Last Son of Last Sons of Crypto, on a Superman podcast. And then there's uh, Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks. Those are great. Uh, lots of shows on those podcasts. I would check those out." Oh, but and also remember, you can also pick up uh, Into the... Well, they say Into the Night for some reason, but uh, yeah, go buy your Into the Dark Night sh- uh, shirts, even though they say Into the Night. Yeah, you can find those <laughs> on Tee Public. Uh, oh, yeah, we're, we are on the Fantasy Comic League, but for some reason, we uh, 
we throw Moon Knight in there for some reason. I don't know why. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. That, Batman's too Batman's too important to get hurt, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the next phase for, the next phase, next phase of what? Uh yes, the next episode uh, will be a Isle of Raw, I believe. So uh mm-hmm. so come back next time for uh that. Those are always great episodes. Uh, yeah, they are. They are. They are. But uh, yeah, once again, yeah, we're part of the collective, a band of f- a few like-minded podcasters who wanted to network in the most traditional sense. It is a repository for ideas, crossovers, and potential guest appearances between the podcast and, uh, like I said, include the likes of Capes and Lunatics, Last Sons of Krypton. Let us not forget Sons of the Dragon, an Immortal Iron Fist podcast uh, by Connor, uh, mm-hmm. Ray's co-host on uh, Last Sons of Krypton, and... Uh, I personally wanted to shout out Inner Demons, the Ghost Rider podcast. Uh, Brian's been uh, solo over there for a while. Brian, you're doing a good job. Keep it up. Uh, if you need someone for an episode or two, let me know. Uh, like we said, again, the big thanks to Hello Headphones for sponsoring the podcast. Uh, and again, check out the show notes on this episode for uh, all the information you'll need. But, uh, and again, if you're listening to this on iTunes or wherever you're listening to it, you know, give us a rating. Uh, please leave a <laughs> please leave a review on iTunes, preferably a five star rating. Help us cast, cast a large net in the podcasting world, and allow other and allow other baddies there to find us. You know, cast a net like you're catching some Arkham, yeah. Arkham criminals. Oh, and Dustin, uh, do you want to? Uh, do you have anything to plug? Do you want to tell everyone where to find you? Um, you can find me on Facebook, Dustin Kurtz. Um, I'm on Twitter at zombiepriest13, underscore 13, sorry. And, yeah, that's not that. <laughs> I don't have that much. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Hey, I guess I want to make some friends with Dustin. All right. All right. And remember, you can always hear us on all good podcast catchers, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Podcast Republic, I, uh, TuneIn Radio, and also available on Twitter and our lips and website. Uh, all right. For the, all right. I have permission now. All right. For those of you who are worried, don't worry. Ray and Moon Knight will be back next episode. <laughs> Happy April Fool's, everybody. Uh <laughs> All right, so Dustin, thank you for joining me for this. Uh, again, we were in kind of uncharted territory here. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, everyone. Thank you. And as always, may Batman watch over all citizens of this dark night. <laughs> Catch you later. Bye. Bye. Batman and affiliated characters, stories, and events are properties of Detective Comics Incorporated. Material used and discussed within the podcast are intended for critique and review purposes only under the fair dealing concept of the current Copyright Act. The views, information, or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the copyright owners. <laughs>